All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to my Fallout 4 Mod Spotlight series, where today we are having a look at the Wasteland Havoc mod, which is being released by user blah blah de blah blah. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is an expansion to the Drivables of the Commonwealth mod, giving you some fun, awesome post apocalyptic -y vehicles for you to enjoy, including two of over here, which are based off of the classic Highwayman, which is just wonderful. I think I prefer this one the most because it looks the most Highwayman-ish, but still a great selection in total of 10 new vehicles for you to drive around the Commonwealth in, and I absolutely love these things. Now, in total, there are eight primary vehicles that are, uh, you know, the main non-experimental ones. And then we have in the back over there two experimental vehicles, which are meant to just mess around with different sort of wheel alignments, etc. So very, very cool indeed. So let's go over what all we do have, starting with, of course, Angry Bob's The Joker, which is just a pretty cool, kind of Mad Max-esque sort of vehicle, but certainly does fit in the Fallout world. We then have Angry Bob's Interloper, which is, again, kind of Mad Max-y theme, at least in my sort of opinion, but still very much fits here. We then, of course, have the two different Highwaymen, starting with the Highwayman Fox, which has that larger engine popping out of the top and a little bit of graffiti around it, and it's just neat. We then have the more classic-looking Highwayman Edge, with its broken windows, rust everywhere, and just, you know, nice. Fun to have the Fallout 2 Highwaymen back again. Now, then we also have the DeSoto, which is a bit more classical of a car. Definitely seen better days with all the rust and a bullet hole, but very fun. We then, after that, have the Charger, which is a very cool vehicle. Again, it definitely has a Mad Max vibe feel to me, especially with all the spikes and the rebar instead of a windshield, but still very neat, very fun, and great to, well, charge around the Commonwealth in. We then have a fun hot rod, if you are wanting to definitely get on your 50s rodster vibe, but of course with a bit of up armoring. Always entertaining. After that, we do have the King Truck with a giant plow in the front, a strange head on said plow, and I mean, yeah, that's it. The rest, it's just a giant truck. It's pretty cool. Now, as for the experimental ones, we have an, another experimental version of the Hot Rod, but just having some much larger wheels in the back. That's, uh, I guess, the experimentation there with just, you know, different sizes of wheels. And then there's also an experimental King Truck, which has just two axles on it rather than the three that are typically on the main one. I don't know much about how the drivables of the Commonwealth mod work, so I don't know how experimental those exactly are. I guess especially with the larger wheel one, that makes a lot more sense, but I don't exactly understand why two versus three axles is such a big deal for said drivables of the Commonwealth. But oh well, such is as it is, and all in all, you got some absolutely great vehicles here that I truly do love. The Highway Wind Mun is definitely my favorite, but uh, you know, they are all pretty good. Now, for the most part, these are all what you see is what you get kind of a thing. Uh, but the Highwayman Edge actually has some fun stuff in its looks menu, so you can go into here and hit the looks menu, and actually mess around with some of its color, texture, body, tires, etc. Actually, the rest are unused here, it seems. So yeah, you can change up things like that, so we can go with the uh, original post-war gray there. Very nice, and it'll reset itself. Very good. Or, of course, we can change up the body here to be a bit more, well, you know, original post-war or pre-war is our two options. Let's actually click the pre-war, just cuz. Oh, there we go, very nice. I prefer the smash windows, though. And of course, finally, on this looks menu one, we've also got some tire options here. Oh, which we can actually get the interlopers tires on there with some Jeep tires. A lot more options in there. Let's go for Jeep, just cuz it's weird. Nifty. <laughs> 
Now, as for how you get your hands on one of these vehicles, it's pretty darn easy. First and foremost, you are going to need the prerequisite of the original Drivables of the Commonwealth mod, because again, this is just an expansion of that. You will also need the Fallout 4 script extender, because this thing uses a whole heck of a lot of scripts to make these vehicles function and to get things like the looks menu we were just looking at there. Kind of got ahead of ourselves before we're actually looking into how we got, but you know, hey, it's good. And uh, yeah, that's it. You just need those for your prerequisites. And once you then install this expansion, you will just get given into your inventory a cool car spawn marker. The truck marker here is from the original Drivables of the Commonwealth mod. So this is the one you want to drop for these specifically. And what you want to do is just find any place in the world where, you know, you've got flat enough terrain for it not to... um roll forward or backwards i mean you'll notice my line here is all right there because they all kind of rolled forward because it's ever so slightly sloped <laughs> whereas that one did not so yeah you'll want some flat nice flat terrain which we certainly have here and then simply just drop your cool car spawn marker which, if you have played Drivables of the Commonwealth, you'll know these things, but I just want to go over real quickly. And as you can see, we have dropped it, so we now have the opportunity to actually move this thing around if we, say, want it, for instance, in another, you know, uh, direction. Or if it's not quite where you want it, you just pick up this thing and move it to where you'd like it to be. And once that is the case, just interact with it again. Now you can select here to continue repositioning, destroy the marker and have it go back to your inventory, or build a cool car. And it's from here that we can then select said car, or of course go back to repositioning or destroy. And so let's get ourselves another Highwayman Edge here. There we go. And it then gives us a warning to step back or be crushed. Cause yes, this car is literally going to fall out of the sky. And if you are below it, it is very much going to kill you because these are physics enabled vehicles. So uh, yeah, back off, back off and wait for our glorious vehicle. And there we go. Wait for it to drop to the ground before interacting. And I would actually suggest more than just once it hits the ground, I would suggest that you wait personally until it stops rolling if you are on any sort of incline. Because personally, I have had issues if they are still rolling back and forth like the truck back there is very, you know, ever so slightly. I've had issues with the car then not driving afterwards. But so long as it is nice and uh, stopped here, you should be more than good enough to go. So you simply just interact with the vehicle and you're gonna get another lovely little bit of UI here where we can go to drive, go into storage, which is shared by all of your vehicles, go into the looks menu, destroy the vehicle if you don't want it anymore, or just, you know, exit. So uh, we'll just go straight into drive. And there we go. Our strange little semi-translucent character is put into the driver's seat, and then you get a UI for all the basic controls, which is quite a bit, but thankfully, if you don't remember things, you can redisplay this message at any time by hitting four. And this is where <laughs> that Fallout 4 script extender really comes in. If that's not working right, none of these things are going to function. But, uh, you know, still, it's not too bad, not too bad at all. And once you're good to go, just hit OK. And we now have a car. Oh, there we go. Sometimes, of course, with the physics and fallout, it does add some lag in. But all in all, we have a car that we can now explore around the Commonwealth Inn, which is just fun. Now, of course, we've had that for a long time with Drivables of the Commonwealth and all the various expansions. But now, we have a load of new post-apocalyptic cars to enjoy with this which I very much do enjoy. They are a lot of fun. Oh boy, car reset itself after I got out. Yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> Watch yourself. Again, when that happens, you might also get crushed. There are a number of opportunities where these cars might crush you. But um, well worth it to have a vehicle in Fallout. It's one of the things 
Oh, I always wish they'd just do normally in the game. And thankfully, modders have made many. This is just yet another expansion to Drivables of the Commonwealth, along with several other driving mods we have seen in the past. But personally, I think this one, with its very, very fun post-apocalyptic style of cars, is probably my favorite so far. It is very, very cool. So if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you have a look at the link in the description in the video as per usual my friends but that is gonna be it for this one today hopefully you all have enjoyed you do come back for whatever mod we do look at next but until that time thank you for watching and as always we'll have a good one